Hi everyone, Broman Jenkins here, and welcome back to Battlefield 3. In the last mission, we barely survived an earthquake and are talking to some nice people. Now, I'm actually going to go and do replay missions. I want to show you something. I went ahead and went through Gone Hunting here, which is you are the gunner in F-18. I've got to say, I was less than impressed. It was 15 minutes of my life. I'm never going to get back. And I did this at the suggestion of someone in the, uh, the Sandcastle. And they're right. That is a boring mission. So we're going to do this one, and I'm going to cut most of Gone Hunting into a quick, easy-to-watch section that I'll just put at the end of this video. It doesn't really have anything relevant to the story till the very end of it. So after this cutscene, I'll get back to you guys. All right, you claim you were knocked out after the earthquake. Yes, sir. Don't bother calling me sir. It's not going to matter. Because you're going to torture me anyway? You don't work that way anymore. Now you just go to the darkest corner of the room. Great. How long were you unconscious? Sun had set when I came to. There was a broadcast. Were you out for six hours? Eight? It's important. Is that a train? We're Try to point? focus on the question, please. Yeah, I was still shaky as hell when I pulled myself out, so I don't know. It was dark. Pulled yourself out. You were buried? I did see something. You just said it was dark and you were groggy. Are you trying to get a rise out of me? We're just along for the ride, Sergeant Blackburn. You're driving. For now. If you say so. So it was dark and you were groggy. You saw something after the quake. What was it? On the other hand, I have a better idea. I let you choose. Choose? Choose what? Oh, come on. What is it? Live or die? Live or die, mister. Him here! Okay, so we're through TBI 1, I'm getting buried in these rocks and such, and we've seen Solomon. Iran. This mission is actually kind of quick, which is nice. Also, I don't... <laughs> how did you not see me? Oh, nice helmet. It's apparently huge. Alright, that's one of the things... Perspective is going to be fun in this mission. So this is quick. We start off with the knife, which is, I guess, for street justice purposes. Uh, don't worry, this does not last long. This is not a forced stealth mission of any nature. Uh, the knife is actually only used for one kill, and you can't be seen doing it. Uh, I actually, like I said, have played through this, even though it's supposed to be a blind LP. Anyways, what we're going to be looking for here is the door back to that room with the carpets from the first mission, remember that? We're actually walking through uh, the meat market, or what used to be the meat market. Uh, the knife is an interesting weapon in multiplayer. Hi, guy. Uh, anyways, it's an interesting weapon in multiplayer. It's usually a two-shot hit to kill it, unless you get somebody in the back and you get them in an animation that kills them. Uh, therefore, it's a little bit more balanced than it is in other first-person shooters, but of course there's not a lot of reason to use the knife in this game because most of your combat takes place at a pretty good distance. And this mission really just gets you used to using it in the first place. I would hate to think that you could use this... Oh! Game stopped me there. The rat was supposed to script to come out a little before that. Alright, notice the size of the rat now. Versus... Uh, oh, three seconds from now. And that's the thing that got Peter really angry right there. So let's, let's look at the rat size versus me. It's got to be bigger than my arm, right? Uh, perspective in first-person games is always kind of fun like that uh, because of the way everything works. Uh, sometimes that looks really weird when you get too close to something that was supposed to be small a second before. All right, no real reason to crouch here. You can walk right up to the guy and do it. I just like two for style points. And stabby stabby. Street justice. Alright, these guys can shoot and hit you in that little, what looked like scripted animation they just had. 
So you can actually die before you can fight back sometimes. And it almost happened to me a couple times. Alright. Luckily these guys don't seem to have grenades. And you'll notice I have a light at the end of my gun right now. That is the tag light attachment. It is very popular in multiplayer. Although there's not a lot of reason you'd actually need it to light anything. But it does a pretty good job of blinding people who are looking directly at it. Including your teammates. Uh, but it's also a really good way to know where you're supposed to shoot when you can't quite see an enemy. If they have one of these things on, you know exactly where they are. Alright, let's pick up the Saiga. Unlike in multiplayer, you can actually carry two primary weapons at any given time in single player, as I found out. And I'm going to be picking up that Saiga for that very purpose. So I've turned my light off. I don't really see much use to it. And what we're going to do here is a little thing I learned the first time I played through here. So if you go around these guys, because you have a silencer, they will not turn and shoot you. That is very uncommon in single player campaigns like this. Usually they're scripted to find you after you kill somebody with a silencer, unless they're scripted to not find you. Alright, so this is the parking lot where our friend was shot in the first video. And I don't think you can get out of here without fighting a bunch of people. These guys don't seem to be infinitely respawning, but they will climb up on that ledge over there, which is very annoying. Alright. It's just a matter of making sure as little of you is exposed as possible, because these guys are deadly accurate. Even on normal difficulty, they are very, very accurate. And it makes it very difficult to uh, attack these guys from anything but this angle. I actually have gone over there, you see where that car is balanced on, balanced on the edge. Uh, where these guys are shooting me from now, and tried to push that over, and it does... You know, I got killed pretty quickly over there. These guys are good at what they do. Uh, see, this guy is nailing me from a mile away. Now, I could switch over to a semi-auto mode. If you look down at the bottom right next to my ammo count, you can see I'm switching from full auto to semi-auto, and that will make me a little bit more accurate. But it won't help anything overall. So, we'll leave that alone for now. And instead, we'll do a quick time event to push a car over. Yeah, doing that while people are shooting at you is very, very difficult. Alright, let's get in here. Um, Alright. And that caused these things to shut, as earthquakes normally do. Alright. This is one of those things about scripting. Look at that! Oh, I love the shotgun. It worked real well right there, at least. Okay. So, let's go into this bus. We couldn't go around it. We have to, of course, go through it. Alright. So, my mistake here is that the first time through, I was looking for the RPG guy, instead of shooting these dudes because I assumed there had to be an RPG guy. It was, of course, just a simple scripted RPG. There was no person firing it. It just appeared out of the aether. So, now I'm stuck. There we go. Can I go under here? Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, there were two guys that were there normally. Oh, well. That's a pretty cool th effect. Uh, if the game hadn't scripted that to fall exactly that way, it would be really cool. But what are you going to do? That's the limitations of technology, I guess. Hi, pal. Alright, fucking. <laughs> These guys just propel themselves across the room when you do that. Oh, that's great. Alright. Well, this is the school, if everyone recalls. Here we go. Opening my own doors. Freeze, motherfucker, hands! Holy shit! Yeah, don't hurt me. Blackburn! Am I glad to see you? In about half an hour, this place is gonna be every fucking man for himself. Is it? Fuck out of here. Okay. Please don't make me wait on you. And we get one of our door opening pals back. Hooray. Misfit, no. This is Misfit 1 3. 
I think I'm almost back at the staging area. I don't know, this place looks real different without any frickin' buildings. Too much you have to do, Osprey's leaving in front of Mike's. Landing engine. Okay, I have to wait for him again, so... Two minutes, climbing around. That's... yep, you're allowed. We. Yep, I'm here. I got the door. Come on. Good for you. I'm very impressed. Just shot up someone's bomb. I just phased through that thing. It's fine. 360. Oh boy. Okay, no thank you. God, I get over here and they're just like automatically thinking I gotta take care of everything, huh? Okay, so this is a Humvee. Uh, in single, uh, in multiplayer, you actually control the gun from the gunner seat inside the Humvee. You don't get out on top of it like this. So when it appears like this, it's a little different. But they actually use this sort of design for one of the multiplayer editions, uh, Aftermath, which takes place right after an earthquake. I shot that car to not be on fire anymore. And it, you know, your guy's actually sticking out of this thing. And it's actually a pretty neat addition and a nice little change. It's too bad that they didn't get those types of vehicles working on other maps. On your left. He's firing. So is a flying vehicle in a shooting game uh, where you're surrounded by enemies. Of course it gets RPGs fired at it. Yep, nothing you can do about that. Those are scripted. That guy does not exist. So, yep, just like any first-person shooter ever, if something's flying, it's gonna get shot at a bunch with RPGs. That guy, also scripted. Can't shoot him. There's some issues with how they scripted things in this game. I think we'll all agree to that one. Alright. Let's make our move. And, luckily for us, this is not one of those games that knocks you out of the sky every time you get into it. So we will get away safely this time. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Next time we're going to be taking on the first of the vehicle missions in this game, and we'll be gunning in an F-18.